in this video, I want to go ahead and kind of give a overview on the Anim BP because in one of the upcoming videos, we're going to actually go ahead and essentially make our own. Now, it's really quite straightforward and you're, I guess, more or less just need to kind of follow kind of an order of operations thing. So to sum it up, you apply your procedural animation, so your movement sway, recoil, aiming, that kind of stuff, before you do an upper lower body split because you want it to run, ding, 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 on the upper body. And then lastly, as it usually kind of goes, after everything else is done, so you can have, you know, whatever other stuff you want in here, just at the end, you go ahead and apply the IK. So let's go ahead and discuss kind of how this works more or less in the procedurals with the virtual bones. So that way it'll hopefully, you know, make sense if you ever decide to tweak or do something additional, like whatever you want. So here is the primary anim BP and it's more or less broken up into sections. So the way this is also kind of set up is things that you don't want, you can also just remove. For example, if you're never going to use the base pose offset, or the third person aiming offset, you're probably gonna actually use that, or the poses, blah, blah, blah. You can literally just delete them and you don't need them. Now that's something I would recommend if you don't need a specific feature, just because it does reduce the nodes and the logic running from the anim graph and it'll cheapen it up a little bit from a performance perspective. So starting from the top, kind of the setup more or less. So. We just literally force the head to be straight in front of us. And then we actually start manipulating the IK hand virtual bones that we set up here on the head. So to begin, what all like what this does is it'll position IK handgun parent, which is this guy, to be right in front of where your camera socket is. Or not right in front of, it'll be right where your camera socket is. So that'll be, say, this guy. So the reason being is this also allows you to offset your camera if you wanted to. So for example, if I were to take my follow camera and move it down a little bit, now when I aim, you can see it's well aimed up high. Not really sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. So this will just position IK handgun parent essentially where the camera is supposed to be. From there, we take the IK handgun ADS. Now this bone, is specific to aiming. So what it'll do is it'll offset from IK handgun parent in a way where it will allow, if the firearm is moved to it, to be lined up, well, to your camera. So to give you an example, let's go ahead and just add a preview asset. Uh, what do you call it? It's like AR4, yes. So AR4, that was the wrong one. So AR4. So the way this kind of works is you have your IK handgun parent, which is right at your camera socket. Then you have IK hand, your VB IK handgun, which is right where IK handgun is. And then you have your VB IK handgun ADS. That ADS bone would be offset in a position where your camera would be at. So for example, let's see, that's where the camera actually is. So I need to go up a little bit. So it would be positioned about where we have IK handgun here. So that is what allows it to kind of function together. So what happens when you aim is you take your, your virtual bone IK handgun which let's pretend it's still right here, and it gets moved to VBIK handgun ADS. So it'll be from here, it'll move to here. And the result that that gives you is you end up with the whatever you're aiming with right in front of the camera. So we can actually see that logic right down here. So we have our IK or our VB, I cannot speak. Sorry, right here, not this one. We have our VBIK handgun, and our source is our VBIK handgun ADS. So it's a copy bone. So we're moving slash copying VBIK handgun to VBIK handgun ADS. 
So we're moving it from here to here. I don't know why it's so laggy when I move the bone, but that's how that actually works. So that's what this little offset here is for. It's for handling that positioning like I showed you. And then what we end up doing is because we have a rotation, so for example, say point aiming where you rotate the firearm or a 45 degree op offset optic, what we end up doing is instead of rotating the ADS bone, we rotate the parent bone. So that allows you to kind of rotate on a pendulum. So for example, this red here is VBIK handgun parent, and this green here is VBIK handgun ADS. So when we take this red parent bone here, and if we rotate it counterclockwise, what happens is it's going to rotate the green IK handgun ADS like this. It's going to be kind of like swinging offset. So that allows you to keep the position so wherever the optic is at whatever rotation, it's going to be centered in the screen. Lastly, because we've manipulated IK handgun parent, we're going to move BB IK handgun to IK handgun just so the positioning is corrected, as you can kind of see here. So that way we have it right exactly where we have our, you know, IK hand gun bone before we start applying procedurals to it. So those procedurals would be done right here. So this is kind of like all of our quote unquote additive stuff. So our movement sway, our rotation lag, movement lag, dead zone, you know, that kind of stuff. And then we have our recoil. So that's kind of the overall gist of the setup to the procedurals. And then you can see things like the offhand IK. So this here, up this top portion is for the left hand. It's quite simple. We just literally grab the pose. We want to go ahead and position IK hand L to IK hand gun. So we can then offset it using the offhand IK. Basically, it's that offhand IK component that we have on, say, the forward grip or the firearm and all that kind of stuff. And from there, we simply do a layered blend per bone and we apply it to the left hand. And that's it. So, well, left hand and the left hand IK. So that's kind of the overall view of how this kind of works. You just have your initial setup. We do our offhand IK. We do our spine, so leaning left and right, looking up and down. We have our other stuff. So this would be for things such as our movement sway, our rotation lag, dead zone, so on and so forth, our poses, our third person offsets, that kind of stuff. And then this recoil here is not the actual recoil, but it just applies, you know, visual recoil. So when you shoot, you see the shoulder move and that kind of stuff. It's just a, a little nice to have, you know, visual thing. And we have our firearm collision. Then we have our ADS logic here, specifically here. Uh, this one here is specific to the curve. So what I mean by the curve is, let's say you have a, oh, what's a good example? A reload animation, and you want to have the ability to aim while reloading. Well, driven through a curve, you control how much influence that reload animation has over your IK hand gun. So while you're aiming, you're, you know, having the movements and rotations of the reload animation influencing the actual, well, firearm. And this aim curve just kind of dictates how much influence it has. So zero being, say, zero, one being full influence. And that's kind of it. So after we run through our procedurals, we only run them on the upper body, which will be here. And that's what this layered blend per bone is. And that layered blend per bone is quite simply just that blend mask, the upper and lower body split mask that we did in the initial video. So one is essentially upper body, zero is lower body. After that, we just apply the IK because it's at the very end. So what we end up doing is we want to move IK handgun to VB IK handgun. Now, the reason being, even though we're doing the upper and lower body split, uh, the lower body still has a heavy influence on the IK hand bones. So that would be you know, this one, this one, and this one. So we want to end up 
and that's actually the purpose of the BIK handgun is because it's on the head it takes all of that you know additional movement and influence that the lower body has away from it so we're performing the manipulations on the virtual bone and then just applying them to the actual IK handgun bone afterwards then we just do two bone IK and this just simply moves the hands to well the corresponding IK bones so if I disable that you can see so like if I aim you know the hands are staying in place they're just performing the whatever animation they were set up to do before and that's it so dead blending you can kind of ignore it that's just for the sake of blending between the procedural layers smoothly uh, this will cover in a separate video I'm not really happy with the free look so it might get overhauled but that's the general kind of gist of it and the way this is also set up is because this is a anim layer this allows us to have multiples of them so for example we have the one that i just showed you that is the full shabam but like when you're holding a firearm and such we also have a unarmed anim layer and this one simply forces the head straight and allows you to lean left and right and look up and down and nothing more this is literally the only thing there so that's what this kind of setup is designed to do so you kind of pick and choose the features that you want or don't want you can go through kind of tweak some basic stuff that we have over here and you just yeah that's kind of about it uh, same thing like if you don't like this component space setup you want to have control over each individual part well you can do so right here like here's the dead zone here's the movement lag the rotation lag so on and so forth so hopefully that kind of makes some sense because in the next video we're going to go ahead and not set up the anim layer but set up an anim bp more or less kind of from scratch because we want to go ahead and get that initial part set up so it'll kind of show you how to do so but anyhow that is going to be all for this video and i will see you in the next one